This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hey, everybody, this is Chase from Barrel Age Flicks. Go ahead and check out our Patreon for raw, uncut footage and early access to all of our episodes. The link is in the description, and it's only $5 a month. Thanks for listening. What is up, guys? Welcome to the Small Batch. Hey, hey, hey. What is up, Tyler? Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I was supposed to like have an intro. What? Like, what the fuck is going on, You're people? You're so late on the game, buddy. <laughs> so, we are going to be doing one of the classic 1980s B movies. Yes. Killer Clowns from <laughs> Outer Space. You call this a B movie. This is an F movie, dude. Who the fuck are you trying to kid? Oh, shut up, man. This is a good movie. This was a fun movie. <laughs> this is a classic. Yes, it is. So, of course, I've picked the alcoholic beverage that we are going to be drinking today, and uh, this is what I'm going with. I'm a little nervous because I'm not an IPA fan, but this is all I could really find, so this is what I went with. The brewery is called clown shoes which kind of works out for the movie this is the it's called josh the guava king it's a double ipa with guava puree the citrus four double ipa derives its fruit flavor from both guava puree and a generous addition of aromatic hops aromatic hops a subtle hop bite pairs with smooth and slightly sweet fruit flavors that define the double ipa it's got a eight percent alcohol volume I'm really curious how this is going to taste. Are you all ready? Dude. You, you guys are. I know this is going to be bad, but let's, let's <laughs> do this shit, man. All right. Let's, uh, let's open the cans. Ugh. Oh, good Lord. Dude, it smells like fucking, <laughs> it smells like fucking grass clippings. <sighs> all right. Bottoms up. Cheers, everybody. Ugh. We all forgot. Yeah. yeah. Gross. I was just trying to get the fucking paint over with. Okay. <laughs> it's not as bad as i was expecting and bracing myself for really no it's not no it's not bad it's actually not that bad at all yeah i just i i can't get over like what a terrible fucking name for a brewery is clown shoes because like clown shoes by definition is like is they're ridiculous and fucking useless because they're so fucking big and cumbersome like why the fuck would you wear them yeah it, and, well, <laughs> see the thing is it's the kansas that really attract you i mean when you go into total wine you look in the aisles the can i will say it's beautiful artwork beautiful artwork it yeah. really is Josh the Guava King. It looks like a dude on a playing a guitar on a. Bike. It reminds me of some trips that I've taken. I will say that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but uh, 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 I would I would give it I'd give it one thumb up. It's it's not it's not bad. I mean, I, would I buy it again? Um, if I was offered to it, I'd drink it. But I probably wouldn't go to the store and buy it again. But I, it's it's not bad. It's it's actually not that bittery compared to other ones that we tried out. It's. Um, I do hold on. I'm gonna give another sip here. I, I don't know. Okay, I'm I'm done when it comes to this, but I don't even know what guava tastes like. I mean, what is that? Like a mango or something like that? I've had guava drinks before, and like usually, like they just have like this kind of like sweetness, exotic fruit kind of taste to them. Like I really can't like describe it uh, necessarily. I really can't put it into words. Like it's how, a very how it mellow tastes. taste. But yeah. Like, but it's uh, it's it's. I don't know, man. It's okay. Like the the guava drink that I had like years ago, like was was good. I liked it. So yeah, it's not bad. Well, uh, one thumb up. How about you, Tyler? Uh, one thumb up as well. Like it's it's actually it's far more enjoyable than I thought it was going to be. Um, so maybe like the low expectations going into it kind of like kind of <laughs> soften the blow. But uh, but yeah, no, it's it's enjoyable, man. Like I uh, I kind of dig it. All right, right on. All right, how about you, Stu? I'm gonna go no thumbs up. Um, really? Yeah, it isn't horrible, but it's not good. Uh, it has a weird funky aftertaste to me. That I'm not a fucking fan of not on like fan. The, the back side of it. It's just I'm gonna drink it just because I'm a fucking alcoholic. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, N- yeah, I would not drink another one. Well, well, uh, I, uh, you know what? It's better than my other beers that I've picked. You know, yes. Galaxy and the yes. uh, oh shit, I'm trying to remember what the other one was, but um, it, it, it's it's not bad. Like I said, one thumb up. It's you know, it, it's worth a try. I, I would say this: it's worth a try. So let's go ahead and get into the movie. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. 
Killer clowns from outer space. Tyler, I'm so <laughs> excited to hear your opinion about this movie. But before we go into that, I'm going to say that I have fond memories of this movie. I mean, the one thing I remember is just the fucking uh, clowns throwing the pies at the dude and fucking just acidic pies. And the guy's just like turning into almost like skeleton and the cotton candy and uh, the colors. I mean, the fucking clowns, man. They, they're great looking. I thought the fucking practical effects and all the puppeteer effects were fucking good. I mean, I enjoyed that. It, this is this is labeled to me as one of those movies that it's so bad it's good. It's just an enjoyable little, you know, popcorn flick, you know? That that's how I see it. How about you, Tyler? You're just looking at me like you're you're wrong. No, no, no. Well, I I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, man. Like I know like that's that's the way you feel about this movie. Like that's that's cool, bro. Like that's that's your own thing. Stu, um before I start shitting all over this movie, why don't you go and tell me? <laughs> Why don't you go and tell me like uh, your uh, your memories of this? Okay, it is be it, be it, they it is a horrible movie <laughs> that is good. Just but I'm going to say it's probably good because of the age I probably was when I first saw it and locked it into my 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 psyche at, at that point. If I had never seen this film until now, yeah, then I'd be like, this is some fucking dog shit. <laughs> But there is, like you said, the practical effects are fucking cool from the Chodo Brothers. Yes, um, the I, I I fucking love the Ice Cream Brother dudes. Oh yeah, the ones that are trying to get laid and they yes. got the two fat chicks. Yes, I thought you were gonna get more so ice cream. pathetic, but it's just fun. Yeah, the attitudes that the fucking clowns had, especially the small clown. I really love the fucking little midget clown. They, that's by far my fucking favorite, especially when he uh, meets up with all the other bikers and that little fucking bicycle. Oh yeah, <laughs> all right. actually that that's another memory I have is also the whole hand puppet scene that I yeah. remember that as a kid because I, I saw this on. I, I don't. I, I remember seeing it up in Michigan with my uh, family. Like I remember creeping right next yep. to the door because but my parents wouldn't let me watch movies like this, and I didn't realize this was PG thirteen. I thought it was R rated when I was younger, but. No, the, I think all the like the uh, the clown theme, the effects, and everything. The fact that like there was really no blood in this movie, yeah, like blunted a lot of like, yeah. you know, aside, like aside from like when like the, you took the open the cotton candy cocoons, like and there was like kind of like a blood sheen or whatever to their face. But I mean, like it didn't what, even look really it was, gory. Yeah, exactly, like it, it didn't look gory, and yeah. like it, it, it like it kind of blunted everything. So like so it wasn't it wasn't a gory film at all. No, no, I, I think I was uh, maybe. Seven or eight when I probably first saw this. I, film. I'd say about the same. For me. And yeah, it was, uh, I think it was on TV, one of those super late night, you know, um, it might have been Elvira that was hosting it. It might have been Elvira that was hosting yeah, it. That, really? That oh, from the Elvira Oscar show? Or something like that. Yeah, something like that. I never, uh, you know, it's, a, it's actually one of those type of movies that would yeah, be on her. her exactly. Yeah. You know, it's just a, a bad fucking movie, but it's a bad movie. <laughs> Did that the mystery is, you si- stuff. Do you know if Mystery Science Theater ever I am this? sure Mystery Science Theater did a fucking review. They had to do this movie. All right. They had to. But uh, overall, man, th- this was fun. I, I enjoy the fuck. I- you know what also I love about it is how, you know, the, the colors and everything, the, yes. the, the sets. That fucking ship is huge, though, man. Yeah. That fucking place is just And they did a great job of combining uh, sci-fi with the circus yeah. and, and give it that. You, you obviously recognize 100%. It's a fucking circus tent. These are clowns, but they can give it that 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 sci fi aspect. Even though, even the that horrible acting from the old man who found uh, found it in the woods when he's looking at the fucking ropes and shit like that. Horrible overacting. You, you know, clowns. all right. You 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 remember the movie Spaced Invaders? Yes, that's the same old yeah. man. It, it felt like there was this movie had a lot of b level actors. Yes, all right, and super. You know, you recognize them from multiple fucking horrible low budget films and they all act like shit yeah the, the, <laughs> the only the only actors that i actually recognize is other than um uh curtis moody the uh the chief of the police mm-hmm. um because he's in animal house yes. but also the i forgot the uh the name of the chick i believe uh she was in weird science suzanne snyder she was uh one of the she was the blonde chick that the two guys were trying to get laid with. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah she yeah, was right, in weird right, sides. Right, right. I don't remember seeing her in anything else, but other than that, I don't remember seeing any other actors that I know. I, I not even the, the the guys in the mm-hmm. ice cream truck. One of them looked familiar. I might have saw him in some movie somewhere, but I don't know who it was. So, but 
It was just like I said, yeah. it was a fun movie. I, I I enjoyed this. In fact, it's it's a keeper for me. I, I can watch this over, and, and over as long as you know that it's a garbage film. Yeah. All right. You don't expect anything good, and then when you see little things that are kind of cool, like the practical effects. Yeah. You know, it makes you actually appreciate them. So you enjoy this better in a split second. Yes. <laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> Fuck yes. We're never gonna we're never gonna leave that film. That, no. that, that film's never Fuck be left Lenny. alone. <laughs> Fuck Lenny. <laughs> God. I just love the fact that I haven't said a single word about how I feel about this movie yet, and I feel like you guys are trying so desperately to no, like, you're try- you no, know what you have to, changed your mind. I, I'm curious. No, give us your opinion, buddy. All right. So when like when you first told me like we're gonna redo this or we're like sorry, when we're we're going to review this movie. Um, I had this like immediate sickness in my stomach, like I just ate gas station <laughs> sushi. It was it, like I was just like, "Fuck, man!" I remember this movie being absolute trash, and like at a pond, like rewatching it, it's way worse than I remember. Because like, because you guys for some reason had like have fond memories of this movie from watching when you were a kid. Like, I watched this shit when I was a kid, not from Elvira, probably from like from Monster Vision. Do you guys remember Monster? Yes, Vision? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Bill Bob Briggs or some shit or Billy Bob or some shit. Like, yeah. Uh, Joe Bob. I think Joe Bob Briggs. Yes. Um, yeah, yes. He's, yes. He's, 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 I think he's still in shutters and like that. Or I've like, seen him in, uh, hosting a few things on shutters. Yeah. Like, so I think yeah. he's still doing his thing. Like he's just, he's, you know, he's way past, like he's way older now than like, than he was back in the nineties. But, um, but yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I probably watched it then. I looked up the, uh, the, the science, the science theater three thousand thing. He wasn't in uh, They didn't do review. Uh, no, Clowns? no. They did like, cl- they did like some, like some, um, because this movie seemed like the type of stuff that they would that would they would do. So. Yeah, it might have been a little bit too. I, I, it's gonna sound weird, but too mainstream you know, it, for it, a lot of their stuff. Yeah, well, see, and, and that's what I was looking up. Is well, like I think this I think this movie gained a cult following. So yeah, yeah. No, I was I was looking it up, and uh, there was a couple things that they had done. Um, they had done like Clowns in the Sky and some other movies, but and, Clowns like in, in the Sky, they had referenced Killer Clowns from Outer Space, but like, but they never actually reviewed it from okay. what from what I can tell. Oh, okay. that's just that's just me kind of doing some some Google foo, um, but. Um, but yeah, no. Beyond that, man. Like, uh, so, yeah, this movie is way worse than than I remember, man. Like, um, it, it reminds me of porn. Like, you know, it was cheap. It was quick. It was made without any sense of di- sense of dignity whatsoever. Um, at first, when I like when I read that the filmmakers like did all the clown effects and everything themselves uh, to save money, I thought, well, that's great, man. Like that, like what industrious like filmmaking. Yeah. Um, I mean, this this film is a joke. It doesn't pretend to be anything less, and I have to respect that for yes. what it's worth. Right. Uh, the clowns do look great. They're truly, truly creepy and unnerving when you look at them. Do, what um, do they remind you? But of? at the same time, ridiculous. No, you, you and I kind of kind of talked about this before, and I thought you made a, a really good point. Like that, it reminds you of the troll from like from Ernest Scared Stupid. Yes. Like it just like there's something about it, like just has like the same like a creepy, unnerving feeling you get when you look at it. Um, the clowns like are fake as fuck. But they're not so fake that it takes you out of it. No, not yes. at all. You know, it's not like they're like they're made out of like paper mache and they have like these static faces. They actually the faces actually move, they emote and everything. And like that just like the eyes blink and everything. It actually makes them look like look real. Like you look at them, you're like, like you know, it looks kind of fake, but at the same time, like there's this realism to it. You're like, well, maybe that's what it actually looks like. Maybe that's yeah. actually like its real face. And like it's just it's it's creepy as fuck, dude. Yeah. The popcorn when it would crawl by itself. I thought that was, really was a neat. super cool effect. Oh, yeah. That was a super cool effect. Yeah. And this movie do- does actually make a very, very good case for, like, for practical effects. Is like, is that while it does look ridiculous in some, some like, some scenes, it looks good. Yeah. Like, it yeah. looks it looks real. Like, you're just, like, it, you know, like, there's a lot of CG effects where you look at it, you're like, ah, that's fake. Like, it just takes you out of me. It takes it out of, out of you. And it takes you out of it immediately. But with this... You know what's there. You know it's palpable. You know you can touch it. Yeah, and like, and it just it makes it that much scarier. I thought yeah. the matte painting also the matte painting work was actually really good too. Like when they first enter the cert, the uh, the um, the tent. Okay, it was good as far as stylistically. No, stylistically, but yeah. I thought it was still pretty decent for the time. I thought it looked pretty good, especially when they saw that ball hanging and it's got the ele- the yeah. electricity. Now, I'm I'm it, gonna it say looks fa- it looked very fake. Yeah, but it still wasn't bad. It, it it didn't look bad. It's not playing nine from outer space bad. You know, it, it reminded me of stuff that I saw back in the you know the 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 fucking fifties type uh, painting on, you know, I star Trek had some better fucking uh, map painting than they well, would think of like a flash Gordon or something like that. Or, or yeah. um, what's that other like one? Said, stylistically, it was really cool looking, but not realistic in any way. No, no, not I realistic. I just, I thought it looked nice. I, I still enjoyed the, that matte painting because I, I knew that was yeah. right then and there. And I thought that was great. And I thought the sets were actually pretty decent. Now that fucking cotton candy room, when you see the, uh, um, 
the control board where you got those little, you know, that looks so fucking fake. That like looked horrible. But I think it was meant to look yes. like that. Like clown is supposed to look all like a playhouse, basically. So I think that's what the whole point was. So yeah, I want that fucking crazy straw that that fat motherfucker had, though. Oh, the one that we I want that fucking crazy it. straw, yeah. suck no, blood out of the was, fucking like, cotton candy. Yeah, no, that, that was kind of a useless scene. I, I kind of mm-hmm. wondered like how how they consume these people. I assumed it was something like like a spider, where like where they put them in this cocoon and like and they they liquefy their guts and they suck it out or something like that. I assume that's what it was. Um, but kind of seeing it was like was I don't know, man. I kind of felt like that was a useless scene, but whatever. That's just my opinion. No, it was just showing you them them eating them. That's what it was. Yeah. And, you know how they consumed it, and you you were spot on the way I took it. You know, c- uh, cocooned them like into the liquefied like a fucking spider. It reminded me of and War of the Worlds. They're just fucking drinking it because War of the Worlds they try to take their blood and everything else. So, but yeah, dude, I, I didn't really feel like I, I like I needed to see that. But I mean, like I guess I guess it was kind of cool, like in retrospect. Yeah, like it makes sense. So. What do you think were some really bad things about the movie that that obviously you hated this film well, versus you li- some good things? Because you liked the clowns. Was it the acting that you didn't care for? Right. Because that, that, I think that's what it was meant for. It was so, meant to be like that. Well, I mean... <laughs> I, I don't think it was guess. necessarily meant to be, but they were okay with it being bad. That, that's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. think it was... They, they weren't trying to make like a... Cla- I mean, trying. they were just trying making a fun film. That's mm-hmm. it's A lot of the 80s movies were like that. There was yeah. a lot of 80s horror movies that had that type of cheesy B, you know, B-rated yep. shit and stuff like that. But overall, it was still enjoyable. I mean, it, I, I also think this is an ode to a lot of classic movies from the 50s, you know? Killer oh, clowns. definitely. Absolutely. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no doubt. It's definitely but, standing on the shoulders of uh, the ones that came before it. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, especially, like, movies like uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yes. You know, like, these, like, those... That, I didn't even think about that. The cotton candy. Yeah, with the body snatchers. That's a good That's a good point right there. Yeah, I mean, kind of. I mean, like, really just more or less, like, just like an, you know, like an alien invasion kind of movie. Um, you know, like, just, it, 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 a world of worlds, like, obviously, like, with the, like, the way, like, the, uh, the guns have, like, this, like, this red glow and then turn people into, like, into the, the cotton candy, like, instead of turning them to skeletons. Um, there's definitely like some 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 very very direct like you know things to to the to War of the Worlds. Um, there's I think there's even like a reference to like to Forbidden Planet. I think I read about that I I can't remember offhand. But like but yeah, there's there's definitely some like some some references to uh, or uh, some some respect being paid to like to the, to movies from that era. But no man, like the the thing that like that really really irritated me about, about this movie was like the, the the plot, the plot and the acting. Like the plot was like was like was paper thin. Um, so. It, I'm, if I could surmise like this whole plot really quickly, uh, again, you guys can tell me like if I'm if I'm wrong about this. So, ancient aliens that look like clowns land on Earth near a small town of Crest uh, of Crescent Cove, and they start harvesting people. Yeah, the sheriff is too proud and cynical to believe what's going on, thereby allowing the clowns to overrun Crescent Cove like Kabul like Afghanistan. <laughs> there is an unneeded subplot of a love triangle between a boy and a girl and the sheriff's deputy that could have been. That, that was meant to give like the story more depth, but really just kind of felt like trite and useless. You, you do have a point that was kind of pointless there, but I, I guess they were just trying to add to the story and it, it didn't really do much to it. I, I kind of just like uh, basically ignored that part of the story. That's exactly it, it just I didn't I just liked seeing the clowns. That's really the only thing I enjoyed about the movies. Whenever the clowns came on scene, you know, those, those were the great scenes like the the creative parts with the uh, especially with the clown uh, when they're in front of the store. And that one clown just goes right next to that little mannequin that's moving back and yeah, forth, yeah, and then yeah, he yeah, starts yeah. doing the same thing. I thought that was great, and yeah. urban you know, camouflage almost like yeah, just kind of like kind of mixes right in. And I thought the really really cool creative thing was using sh- the uh, moon, uh, the sheriff as a hand as a fucking uh, a puppet. Yes, using his body as a puppet, you could see his hand being pulled I'm out. Quest, I fucking love that. That, yep. that was great, man. But you have a point on the p- plot and the acting. It, it's horrible, but it's all they could do to. A lot of movies that were made like that did the exact same thing. Okay, so I was just looking up. Okay, what was the budget on this film? It's two million. Not yeah. even that. I okay, I see one point eight million according yeah. to this listing. Yeah, no, I just I just read I read two. I guess round it up. Yeah. Did you see uh, what the worldwide gross has been? No, what no, no. I have no idea. Take a guess. Just take a guess how much you think this this movie has made. Twenty million. Not like not like five. Forty three point six million dollars. Get the fuck out, dude! Really? Well, it made his money. Yeah, according to WorldwideBoxOffice dot com, forty. It made 15, how much in the U S though? Fifteen point six. And how much was the budget? Two million. Uh, just according to this, one point uh, eight. 
They made their money yeah, back. More than made their money back. Overseas grosses, $28 million for a combined total of $43,625,096. That is crazy. I never even thought about that. Yeah. That yeah. it made that much money. You know, man, this is all Friday the 13th's fault. <laughs> no, no, it fucking is. So, like, so they made Friday the 13th back. I think, like, they actually produced it back in, like, in 79. Like, I'm, I'm reading here, like, that it was, like, it was it was 1980. But, like, but I think it was 79. Um, that movie was made for, like, for a fucking shoestring, like, on a shoestring budget. Made a shit ton of film. Obviously, like, you know, like, a dozen fucking, like, you know, sequels were made after the fact. And, like, and it, it just, they kind of started off this whole fucking string of, Horror films being made in the 80s that were made like with like very, very little money, but had a huge return. And like in this movie is just another example of that. And so like, so yeah, so fuck you, Jason. I'm really shocked at the reviews of this movie on the trauma meter for 24 reviews, 75%, which is really actually pretty decent. But the audience score is 59%. Yeah, because of- this movie sucks. And it does. It's it's fun. It sucks. I'm not even done. Like I'm not even done summarizing the movie yet. Like, <laughs> all right, get back to it. Go ahead. All right. I'm, so, I'm, I'm curious. So all right. So after we already talked about the, uh, the the useless like fucking love triangle, which like which was supposed to add depth to this movie. It was supposed to, you know, like the deputy was basically supposed to like to see past his differences with like with like with the boy. I can't remember his fucking name because he's so useless to the plot. Um, supposed to see past his differences and like and like they're they're like they're kind of. Um, their conflict on with with the girl, whatever, to like to to beat like this this uh, this alien menace. Um, and it just it does nothing for the story. It really could have been left out, and his sense of duty to like to his job and his post could have been like what was the driving force and like and what he did. It could have been the the motive behind like behind his actions, and uh, could have made him seem more noble than just a piece of ass. Yeah, you know. Like, yeah, but, no, you, you got a point there. Yeah. Um. So when they figure out how to kill one of them by destroying its red nose. I mean, you're just like so fucking like just so flimsy like you have this like this this clown that he literally shoots in the gut like twice and then he shoots in the nose and like it turns like into this like green tornado and fucking like explodes like come on man fucking really like, you're talking about the the uh, finale uh clown the one at the end of the movie no you, no, 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 talking is, about no, no earlier yeah yeah but, well the thing i couldn't figure out is that the finale or uh, the the big giant clown which i thought was really awesome actually i thought that was cool shit. clownzilla yeah clownzilla whatever it is and he shot the nose and he started spinning and then the whole fucking ship blew up like what what was he like part of the ship or something like that i don't that, fucking know that dude. that i didn't i couldn't figure that out but I, I guess they just tried to make it so the ship exploded i was glad the two guys lived though the two guys yes the, the ice cream the brothers guys, the ice fuck cream yeah i thought they were actually dead and yes. i yeah, yeah that that was kind of nice they're such garbage fucking people yeah no in retrospect this movie actually had a really disney ending because like all the main characters lived yes you know like the yeah. the, the cop the boy the i girl, was hoping like, moody fucking, lived i actually liked moody yeah the brothers fugazi like they fucking survived yeah. like yeah but also yeah. like three quarters of the fucking town dead <laughs> yeah no i mean like it seems, it, se- it seems like the entire town was like was fucking like cotton candy fine. exactly and like and they were the only survivors like it yeah and then also who the fuck is gonna believe these people when they try to say what happened to all these fucking residents of this fucking town clowns oh. from space can you attack us <laughs> exactly. i would just i would just like which which that's one thing i don't understand like is that like is everyone that tried to explain like hey we need help okay well what's going on well, there's killer clowns from outer space, like, you know, like, turning everybody into cotton candy and shooting us with popcorn that turned into, like, little fucking, like, snake heads, like, the fucking, <laughs> like that bite us and shit. It was just like, bro, like, fucking play down, like, hey, there's some, like, there's a, there's a, there's a Charlie, uh, fucking Charlie, Charles Manson fucking, uh, clan, like, you know, killing a bunch of people, like, say some, like, some believable yep. shit. Right. And, like, they're like, no, like, some fucking supernatural thing like that. Nobody's gonna fucking believe you. Like, play it down. Like, be fucking rational. Like, say something that somebody will fucking believe so you can actually get the help that you need. Yes. Yeah. Well, do you think this, uh, do you think this movie would put, go into the whole thing, or, you know how a lot of people have a fear of clowns and everything else. Mm-hmm. Like, people have, what, what I read is, is the, phobia? the, the Chiba brothers, you know, try to write a movie about the scariest thing they could fucking think of. And clowns, and clowns, is clowns like, was it. And it still oh, is. I mean, clowns to this day, mm-hmm. they don't fucking bother me at all. I fucking love, I actually think clowns are cool as shit, to tell you the truth. Uh, I, I really dig that. I, I know a lot of people that would be scared the fuck out of this movie just seeing the clowns like the way they are. I mean, if they, you saw this at some type of haunt or anything like that, well, what's up? John Wayne Gacy was the, uh, the clown killer, right? Yeah, yes, he was. He was. Yes. Okay. Do you think think the modern fear of clowns developed out of that story i mean it very well could have for sure uh, that, I don't, re, that real no, woken because, no there's actually a phobia about clowns but uh, i'm wondering if if that was really a, a major thing until that happened serial killer clown i don't know I, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out i'm trying to see it's called 
Caldrophobia. Caldrophobia, mm-hmm. literally a fear of someone who walks on stilts is an unofficial word for the irritation, ir, irrational fear of clowns. While being afraid of clowns is being increasingly common, having so called colophobia, that's a weird name. I thought it'd be called clownophobia, said the psychiatrist Robert Judgment. Yeah, so, I mean, so it's it, becoming uh, increasingly common. So it's something that wasn't common and is now, as society goes on, becoming more and more of a thing so it, it is developing yeah this, it's, this one article that i'm actually i'm looking at right now uh directly cites john wayne gacy as the like the beginning of uh this the, the uh, fear of clowns the fear of clowns who performed as pogo the clown mm-hmm. at charity events and children's parties solidified the idea of evil clown so this is like a modern you know fairy tale a modern you know can't t- tale around the campfire that be, that has now entered when the, do those, when do those murders happen uh, uh the 70s. six or the 70s i, I yeah. thought it was the 60s. 70s yeah um so that's something that's developed and 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 become part of the modern psyche as a culture um uh, that other things like you know fear of the dark or fear of you know wolves or, or whatever some fucking so fear of snakes you, fear of spiders this is something that you know was from primordial to, you know passed down through generations and now this is something that is a developed in modern times so that you'd also say if there was no john gacy there would have never been the joker Problem. from batman uh because that's no a, no he no joker predates uh john Wayne gacy yeah, he, no, he wasn't a, uh, he uh, uh he was a criminal okay. all right and, yeah, they, yeah, and they made right, all that something right. ridiculous yeah because batman was in the uh started in like the 40s something like 1939 1939 yeah. okay so i've been wrong I, I was just curious because yeah. you know that'd be the first that, that'd be a clown criminal and that's why i was curious because there's a difference knows. between a criminal and a fucking goddamn murderer <laughs> yeah no you, you got a point you got a point uh, i was just it, it's just something that crossed my mind about the joker because yeah. he's you know the clown prince of crime so mm-hmm. tell us more on why you despise this movie all right so i already kind of talked a little bit about the um uh the, the like the destroying the red nose like and it's like it's their weak point and like it you know causes them to explode or whatever well, what do you think a clown's achilles heel would be uh well no that's that's fair like you know like, right. so, so, like so when he shot the when he shot the nose like and the the clown like fucking exploded i'm like well yeah that makes sense like you know like what yeah. else would their killer heel exactly. kill, kill seal be into, like as you said <laughs> um so like so i mean like yeah that kind of makes sense but like and like and again kind of going back to what i said earlier like this movie is fucking ridiculous it doesn't pretend to be anything serious nope. like so well that's, that's i kind of have of it i kind of have to take it for like for for what it's worth um, but yeah, so like, so after that happens, like, you know, like they, they figure out like, oh, this is their weak point. Like, you know, we're going to go on the offensive now. And so like, so they attack the mothership, um, that looks like a circus town, of course. And like, and after like finding like their way through, like through the maze of funhouse style cor- cor- uh, corridors and, uh, the brothers Fugazi fuck the aliens with a Reebok, uh, fucking pump up tits. Do you guys notice that <laughs> yeah, as, yeah. as soon as they fall like in the fucking pit and like, they look up like at the, uh, the clown girls, whatever, like their tits start to grow. And I was just like, Oh, that's, that's awfully convenient. Yeah. But it looks like they actually had some fun with them from the looks of it. It kind of, it kind of reminded me of those clowns. It reminded me of gremlins, you yes. know, the, the fucking, uh, chick gremlin and gremlins too, mm-hmm. the new batch. That's what it kind of reminded me of, bro. And they like, and like when you see them the next time, like they're covered in fucking lipstick, their clothes are torn. Yeah. I'm like, dude, those guys had a good time. Yes, good they for did. Them. <laughs> Just- good for them. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, and so uh, so anyways, like so they destroy the final boss, the clownzilla we talked about. The alien ship just kind of explodes for whatever reason, and they saved and they saved the day. Or so it seems, and that's another thing that pisses me off at the end of this. So, like you mentioned earlier, that one uh, the uh, the security guard at the amusement park gets covered like in the fucking like the uh, the pies, and he melts into fucking like into like you know whatever like a uh, it was like acidic pies, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it melts into soup. They get hit with the pies, and nothing happens to them. Well, they didn't get hit with nearly as many pies. Not ne- not nearly as many. All right, I don't know what the acidic value per pie math breaks down to but that fucking guard got just completely and I, I thought utterly it was just, covered i thought it was just another creative way of, yeah. of the killings in this movie because there was a lot of good killings in this movie that i enjoyed like that one and also i thought the whole ordeal with the punks over there and you, you, the guy it, it reminded me of jason uh, uh jason takes manhattan when he just knocks his head off yes you remember that's that that was fucking great i love that i was like oh that's jason takes manhattan right there oh. um and just seeing his head just plop in the trash can and then also they're doing their fucking hand puppets and they just grab him up like a tyrannosaurus rex I loved it, man. It was fun. I, I was just laughing my ass off watching this movie. I, I was just having a good time, man. No, like, for some reason, like the uh, the punks did remind me of like the punks from like from the Terminator. Oh yeah, yes. they did. They, they, yeah. Hair. they wandered from the, the wrong fucking set. Yep. But yeah, no. My my question at the end of this shit show was like, was how the fuck did this movie cost two million dollars? 
because like because I understand like that they they did the clown suits and everything themselves like just the animatronics. Money. But still, like the the clown suits and like and the overhead and like and the sets and everything that they had to build, I'm still trying to like finding it hard to believe that even back in like in you know 1987 that this movie cost two million dollars. Like what the fuck? Well, I guarantee the Cheeto Brothers probably fucking pop. And there was three of them, um, two that wrote it, and but it was all three of them that were. They're also the. In fact, they're also the creators of another great uh, B movie, uh, Critters, which is a classic right there. Yes, but I, I guarantee they pocketed at least. $500,000 Five hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of that one point eight million dollar budget. Yeah, I guarantee yeah. they paid themselves. But I know where the money went into. Basically, I think that what the money went into is not just the animatronics because that's a lot of money. Also, the latex and everything else. Because you remember that ending scene, there was almost like twenty or thirty of them, mm-hmm. like all just gathering up while they were climbing that. I don't know. They had a, a, a wide something. selection of clowns. I yeah. will give them that. And watching the credits and seeing how many uh, uh, of the cast was listed as clowns, like. Yeah. That was a lot of fucking clowns. But there was yeah. a lot of sets, And, and they were too. all different. Like, there was, credit. There was yeah, also that, a lot of sets. Yeah, and that parade scene was actually pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So kind of reminded me of uh, Batman Returns. Yeah. Yeah, I can see yeah, that. See when they're uh, when they're gathering all the children mm-hmm. up. But I, I thought also the sets. There was a lot of sets in this fucking movie, especially when, at the end of the finale when they're going through the ship, which I just was, like, never ending. I, I just couldn't figure out how, the fu- how big is this fucking place. I mean... When they looked in that, when they, in the beginning of the movie, when they went to that first room, it's where like the Doctor Who's TARDIS, bigger yeah, on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, not only that, like you know, like it, like there's elevators, so obviously, like you went down, like you know, yeah, you and got they, well, it went there. underground because yeah, it, once it, wasn't it a came circus, up, it was more like a, a tent, like a like a top. It was, uh, a uh, it was when it came up. It looked like a diamond, basically. Yeah, that, that's and it was, so, was kind of like an iceberg almost, like where the tip was like was much smaller than yeah. like, the actual body of it. Yeah, yeah, but I thought that was really creative how they did everything, but. I do have to figure out what was the whole purpose. I mean, were they actually clowns or were they actually just aliens with makeup? To, uh, okay, so I was thinking about that and I started thinking something like this could happen in in the infinite universe that we have where there's any infinite number of combinations that could happen on infinite number of planets that could support an infinite amount of species uh, you know, in the entire fucking universe mathematically yes there is going to be developed a race of ones that look like fucking what we assume as clowns that have all these fucking weird little things that happen just because of the infinite void that we live in in this universe yeah that they, they it has to exist more than likely versus not existing see well, i was always thinking that they were just like they were spying on us like the no nope, I, I took it as that, that was saw what them the clowns were <laughs> nope that yeah, well, this happened to be them it's they, just funny because the whole thing is every they had play toys they had the, the yeah. clown mobile they had the fucking circus they What's had it? the it popcorn go- the cotton candy i mean it all added up i figured it was something that they were trying to hide themselves of what they really were you know what i mean it goes like yeah. you know that that it, you know you put a thousand monkeys in a room for a thousand years type of way a thousand and typewriters eventually by random coincidence they'll type out the entire works of shakespeare yeah all right it just by just mathematically just a randomness it's gonna pop up out of out of randomality yeah that's true you guys are overthinking this shit <laughs> no it, it does make you think though i mean it, you you wonder why i guess they just made it just because ah, we're gonna make a fucking stupid movie yeah. it's about clowns and aliens mixed up there you go fun movie yeah. right there so it, no, no, you're absolutely right, man. Like yeah. they, they, I think they're just like, yeah, let's let's get clowns, which are really, really like you know, are, are really trendy right now as being something scary. Having having uh, yeah. Jan, John Wayne Gacy kill a, a shit ton of people, like just about you know five or so years or ten years later, uh, yeah. ten years earlier than this. And uh, yeah, they're just like, yeah, fuck it, let's go have like killer clowns, which are really, really trendy right now. And let's just do like some like some old school like Space Invader shit, just kind of like kind of yeah. crunch together, like you know, like make a fun movie out of the whole thing. Let's make a shit ton of cash, which as it turns out, they did. They made forty one million dollars. Reminds me of Life Force, right? Vampires from space. You ever yes, seen Life Force? Yeah. I didn't even think about. It. You ever seen Life Force? Yeah. No, I never. Saw oh, it's a Toad Hooper movie. It's actually mm-hmm. worth seeing. It's it's actually got it's got. It's got Patrick Stewart in it. Yep. Um, it's got a whole bunch of great actors in it, but that's a Tobe Hooper, who is the director of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and also part two. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, no, it, it's, actually, it's actually a fun movie. I own that. It's a Shout Factory. It's well worth the watch, but it's basically vampires from space. Mm-hmm. It's it's so when you think about clowns from space, vampires from space, what else is out there? I mean, what, what are the movies that they made with a certain type of genre? Jason or, in space. 
Yeah, I mean, eventually everything goes. <laughs> Hellraiser in space. space. Well, no, no, I'm talking about like space. Indiana Jones is probably it might have like have some space fucking things. Yeah. You would so. never stop with that Indiana Jones in space. I don't even think it takes place in space. It, there, it, it has, wait, to, it wait, has to have something to do with space. No, wait there's no see. way it takes. Place. We'll see. It, it, they have a recording of them a filming a scene during a, the the celebration of the fucking moon landing. Okay, but that's on the planet Earth. It's not going to be taking huh. place in space. Now, if Indiana Jones goes to space, then I'll be wrong and I'll take a fucking million shots. But but then they no, kind of already have something like that with <laughs> the crystal skull. Yeah, let me write this shit down. Million shots. But Chris, said? Fuck you. Uh, so crystal. Okay, crystal skull didn't happen in space. It was on the planet. But when they got transported, it, 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 they never up. go to space. It, I'm talking about Indiana. Uh, when I'm they get transported, Indiana they're Jones going. Like, no, it, they're no, going no, 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 across no, the fucking no, no, universe. No, or I'm talking shit. about like Indiana Jones wearing a fucking astronaut uniform and going to space. And if I see that shit, then I will. Th- then I won't have any place to. But argue. he's already gone to space. No, he hasn't. By being transported to an alien fucking planet, he's gone to fucking space. When has he been transported to a fucking planet and the, with the crystals and shit like no, that? He was still on the fucking planet. It was still there on Earth. It was twirling around when they were on the fucking land. They were never in space. Mm-hmm. I, I thought they got transported somewhere else. Yeah, you're I, fucking I, wrong. That's yeah, very well because it's a fucking shit goddamn movie <laughs> right, that I, I saw one time it's the worst like, i will jones, never fucking the, watch this shit again i was to watch it it's indiana jones fuck you is uh, it is it indiana jones or is it mutt or whatever the fucking goddamn kid's name was it's indiana yeah, jones no yeah no it must be mud. all right back, yeah. to, back to the subject all right so you can you can go ahead and claim that they spent the money on whatever as sure as shit wasn't on the writing and as sure as shit wasn't on the actors john <laughs> vernon john vernon is the only recognizable person in this whole fucking movie no played. no no well yes yes animal house but also weird science suzanne the one i just talked about oh, yeah, 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 yeah yeah the girl yeah what, yeah. The thing is, you didn't recognize her when no, you watched. No, it? no, not at all. No. Yeah, no. She was. Yeah, she was one of the girls that the uh, the nerds were trying to get with. But uh, yeah, I think he's the only one. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Other than her. Yeah. Well, because he's a character actor, he's done like a shit ton of things, and it was funny because like I saw him, I was just like, I know this dude from so much shit, but I can't place a single. I can't place a single thing. We must so put like, them on double secret probation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, so I started. I like I looked it up, and like, and yeah, dude, like he he's been on fucking. He's been on on Animal House. He's been like in uh, in Dirty Harry. He's done, done like. He was Air- in Dirty Harry? Yeah, and he did uh, Airplane 2. Oh, uh, I remember him that. Yeah, and he uh, he apparently did the voice for Shao Kahn, the, the Mortal Kombat a- a- animated show. And he was also Rupert Thorne in the Batman animated show also. He does a shit ton of, vo- of voice work. What about Christopher Titus? He was in there. Was he? Where? Uh, apparently he was Bob McReed. Uh, I'm just looking at the cast right now. <laughs> he was He's listed as Bob McReed. No shit. Yeah. So I... Can't remember who the fuck Bob McReed was. I, I don't even know who that and is. And that Josh Allen Nelson, uh, Dave, who played Dave Hansen, he is very familiar to me, and I don't know why, but his face is absolutely fucking familiar. Well, you know, I'm going to prove a point here. A lot of movies that are, like, cheap or, you know, B-movies and stuff like that, they always pull an actor that is, like, classical or, or been in a lot of movies. There's always one actor, and I guess he's the one for this one. That is a well-known actor. Well, actually, he's not well-known. I've only seen him in Animal House and what, what you've talked about, but I've never really seen him in anything else. His voice is very familiar. Like, I've heard his voice in a lot of, maybe he does a lot of voice characterizations. You said that he did the Batman and the, I've never seen him in those, but I could, I've could i heard his voice. But the only thing I remember is just hearing his voice as a sheriff. I just saw Animal House. I saw the dean of the college, so. Mm-hmm. Still looking up. Well, yeah. Uh, apparently, Punk number 2 was played by a dude named Danny Kovacs. He's also Danny Kovacs was in True Crime with Clint Eastwood, uh, Pacific Heights with Michael Keaton. But did you recognize any of these other actors? Listen, like, I, I recognize, I, like I said, I can recognize them by face, but I don't know any other fucking names or where I know them from. It's, <laughs> it's like one of the I know cream, that motherfucker. One of the I know ice, that motherfucker. One of the ice cream truck drivers I've seen in something. I just don't know what, but I mean. Yeah. It's not recognizable to the point where it's like, oh, I know, you know, it's... it's well, yeah. well, I mean, like, it's, that's just my point is, like, is that, like, you know, like, there was no Bill Pax in this fucking movie. No, there was no, no Tom no. Cruise. Like, you know, no. like, the, like there, there was no fucking Michael Bean. Like, you know, like, it's... it's None you know. of these actors got anywhere to where other actors have gotten. They, they, they it's... They're, they're, it's... Nobody's really gotten popular in the, from this movie, you know? Yeah, it, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> you do have a point on that. You do have a point on that. Really, I think this movie's looked on. What's good about this movie is the practical effects. I think that's what, you know, some movies, people love it for the story. Some people love a movie just for the effects and, you know, the creature effects and stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. what people like this movie for is the creature effects because it does have really good state-of-the-art 
practical effects. I, yeah. I think they look pretty damn good. No, I mean, like I said, like it was definitely industrious, and like, and uh, the 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 thing. Th- that that's I, a good. That's a good word. Industrious. I feel like it's a more industrious film than an acting film. You know? Yeah. Well, the like the the like the thing I remember from this film, like is like is was the, were the clowns. Like that was the thing. Like I don't remember shit about the story before rewatching it for this. Like for the show, um, I didn't remember anything else. The actors, nothing. But I do remember. The clowns and yeah. like in that uh, that ventriloquism that ventriloquism scene, like with the uh, with like with the sheriff. Yeah, I, I thought, thought that was that cool. Shit. Yeah, I, like I said, I thought that, like I said, that was one of the standout scenes that I loved. I thought, oh, that, that, that was actually really horrifying. Yeah, and you just see him pull his hand right out of his back, and his hands all covered in blood. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah, yeah, no, like that was actually that was that was actually a very very well done scene, and like an and credit to like to the actor like that would that was playing the clown. He pulls his hand out; it's covered in blood, and he's kind of like just like shakes his hand off and you hear like the splatter on the ground and everything. And, and yeah. like the, the clown's movements were very slow and deliberate. And like, it was just like this like tension building. He like, he moves the desk away, like with just like with a single hand, like kind of like showing like the strength of the clown. Yeah. And like, and he gets shot in the gut twice. doesn't phase him at all. Like, and it's just like, it's actually a really fucking terrifying scene because you realize like how strong and how powerful and like how, how virtually invincible these things are. Well, one got yeah, one got hit by a car. Yeah, and it was totally I mean, fine. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean th- that's the thing. That's the thing I like about it is that the clowns to me look realistic in a way of being fake. I don't know if that makes any sense, but you know what I mean. It's just they they looked like something that they looked. Re- <sighs> No, no, actually, you know what no, I'm trying to, you no, know what no, I'm no. trying to say? No, so like it actually plays on a real, on a real like human fears. Like, so there's like, there's, there's a thing out there where like, where, um, we always kind of wonder like why something that is like, that is human in appearance, but like, but they're like, but it's obviously not human. Yeah. That is so fucking terrifying. Like, you know, like the mask from Slipknot, Michael Myers, like, you know, like these things that like that look human and they're close enough to being human, but there's something off about them. Right. And that is what, like, what, like, I think part of like why these clowns are so terrifying is that they, like, they look real enough to where like, you're like, oh yeah, I could buy that, but there's something not quite right. Yeah. Okay. So with how much of a cult following this has with how much money it's actually made, are you guys surprised there's never been a sequel? So apparently there's like, a remake in the works. There was a remake in the works. What it's been canceled. Yes. So MGM owns the rights. Yeah. Uh, they went to sci-fi sci-fi offered MGM to make the film for $2 million to make the sequel for $2 million, which is exactly uh, you know about what they spent what, what year? In, back in the eighties. Uh, 2021 is as recent as the story that I'm seeing from, uh, one of the Cheeto brothers. Okay. Um, so I guess the, the story was already written. It was supposed to be the return of killer crown or killer clowns from outer space. 3d, um, was the, the title. It story is already written. Uh, is this right after, because right after they did the new critters. Yes. He, he references that, you know, they did the, the, the critters one, um, sci-fi did, did the critters one. He said, he even says, you see how that turned out. Um, yeah, I don't think it did well. It, no, no, it was bad. Um, so he's like, and they offered us $2 million and that's what we spent, you know, to make the first one. Yeah. We're not going to fucking do it again for that same fucking price, you know, with the way everything is, you know, costing now. And even MGM's uh, agrees that the product is worth much more than that, uh, that, the, that sci-fi was willing to invest. So odds are we'll never see a sequel Unless a whole bunch of fucking people, you know, show a demand for it where MGM feels there could be something actually worthwhile. There is a call following for this movie, but I don't think it's enough to make a to worthy of me. Ma- no. I, I think they're just fine. Just keep it laying it, the, keeping it the way it is. And I, 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 rem- I remember reading something about them making a remake, not a sequel, but a remake to it. No, no, just what, like they're doing a remake to like the Toxic Avenger, which is uh, in a, in the same vein of this movie, which I'm so very hesitant about. I'm really curious because of the it's got a lot of good. It's got Kevin Bacon. It's got Peter Dinklage. I mean, it's. I'm it's, still very hesitant about it. it. Well, it's already done filming. I know. So uh, uh, it, it, filming. Am so. I going to watch it? Yes, I am. Oh, me too. I mean, <laughs> of course. In fact, that's one. When that uh, that's just to be a future tease mm-hmm. in the future when that movie is coming out we are definitely going to be doing a small batch on the original Toxic Avenger and Tyler you are going to be a part of that episode because I don't think you've seen it have you No like I caught the original like on TV like fucking years ago I don't uh, remember I don't remember, I don't remember shit that's about. another one of those movies that it's so bad but somehow works I love it Yeah I, I, I love I, I remember, it but it's a bad I, movie I it's what Lloyd Kaufman relates yeah. all of his movies to I mean yeah. trauma I mean it's that that's that's his number yes. one movie so. but you have to admit trauma films they're bad. 
They're horrible. They, yes. But they're fun. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's what I mean. I, Tromeo and Juliet. Poultry Geist. I mean, fucking Poultry Geist. Yes. It's chicken li- living, yes. neither the living chicken dead. I mean, it's, it, that's, that's what this is. I would, you know what? In fact, I would even say that this would be a good trauma film. That this movie is almost trauma material. I mean, would you say that? No. You don't no. think so? No. You think trauma is a little bit more raunchy? Raunchy. How, uh, Tyler, you ha- I know you said you saw The Toxic Avenger, but you haven't seen any other trauma films, have you? No, no, no. Oh, I, I, we're no, going to have fun. I, I value my time. Oh, <laughs> we're going to have fun. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I already have it's a small batch. What, what, as long as you're going in with the mindset of these are bad movies. They're yeah. meant to be bad movies, but they're having fun. Fun. Now, do you think this movie stupid to have fun? But do you think this movie was made to be a bad movie, or do you think? Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, why would you fit it in the trauma criteria? Trauma is a lot more raunchy. Okay, I I will hand you at that. Yeah, that that is true. That they are more R rated to almost Mm -hmm. NC seventeen material. A lot of tits and ass, and a lot of extreme gore. Yes, but if they made a remake of this, do you think it should be PG thirteen, or do you think it should be R rated? Do you think they would try? You think it would be better off? I would want it the hardest PG-13 they could get away with. Okay, so you wouldn't want it to be R-rated then? It, I think it would then take away from the campiness that is inherent to the property. Okay. I don't so. think it should be remade. I don't think there should be a sequel. Mm-hmm. I don't think it should be remade. This movie this movie hit like well, like you know, hit at a decent time. Um, again, like, you know, like we were fresh off John Wayne Gacy. Like the, the, the clown fear was like was at its peak. Um, like, you know, like the, the alien, uh, the, you know, alien invaders thing was like, was still relevant. It just, it hit perfect at the time that it did. Um, and, uh, I frankly don't need to see any more of the shit. So now, <laughs> is this that. movie, is not, is this movie have no replay value at all? Like this is like a one and done deal with this movie or you'd watch yeah, it again? No, 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 absolutely. Like, man, like if I don't have to see this movie again for a while, like, you know, like I'll, I'll be thankful for sure. Really? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I you think know. I'm going to show it to my son. Do it. I think I'm going to show it to my son. It's pretty tame. It's not yeah. bad. I, I don't. I, I, shit. I mean, you let yeah. him watch uh, fucking. Uh, what, what did you just let him not watch just recently? That was uh, our Blazing movie. Saddles. No, was it Blazing Saddles? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Blazing Saddles. Yeah, I think Killer. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I actually, I wouldn't even put this. This is. It's not really a hard PG thirteen. It's really no. not bad at all. It's there's PG rated movies that are actually more violent than this movie. I know there is. I mean, it, it were a lot, especially a lot. I mean, shit, Jaws is more uh, horrifying. Well, that, 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 that's but because PG-13 didn't exist. Then. Yes, I know. But, I mean, I, right. like I said, this, there's no R-rated. Like I said, in the, in, when I was a kid, I thought this was an R-rated movie. But after watching this, it's very tame. It, I, I think this can get away with I, – I guess I won't get away with the PG rating, but um, no, uh, I don't know. I think PG-13 is the right good. writing for it. You think it's a good writing for it? I do. Okay. Well, I'm wrong. All right, so a couple other things like that about this film, like that, irritate the fuck out of me. <laughs> you just, it's a nonstop love list. With you. No, no, I, I got, I, I got love it. Shit. I'm gonna go for a while. So, like, so, uh, of course, like the dog is the first to go, as always. Okay, you're talking I, about the balloon dog. The balloon dog? No, not the balloon dog. No, no the no, dog no, like that the, was the taken. The, the hunter, the farmer's, yeah, not hunter. Sorry, the farmer's dog. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I thought you were talking about the yeah. balloon dog. No, no, the bloodhound. Yeah, I don't yeah. give a fuck about the balloon dog. It's not a real dog. No, like, no, like, that shit. I didn't like that shit. I thought that was kind of weird yeah. i blame the 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 main chicken dude for the entire town dying i blame them if they didn't fucking go there and do the stupid shit inside the fucking tent because they wanted to go fucking exploring and shit like that and then ran away and that had the uh, that one fucking clown following them, i'm like hey oh what's this over here oh there's a lot of these motherfuckers uh, over he here just we're taking all over he was yeah. just trying to be mr yeah. tough guy and get laid that's all he was trying yep. to do nope it's their fault that everybody in that fucking town died yeah. fuck them yeah no i i mean I, like I, i'll go and I'll, I'll go and back that up with like with something i did like i like the uh the fugazi brothers uh, I, don't, I know that's not their last name but like i really don't give a shit at this point the ice cream truck yeah like, they have you know, been rechristened that that works yeah uh yeah like they uh they would roll into like into make out point and uh they were like take a stick Lick it and it will tickle you all the way down. <laughs> yes. like, like you know, like have some ice cream while you screw. Like it was, it was, it was good. Like I, I like their whole fucking play. And then you see those two fat chicks come out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys said we could have all ice cream we want. You didn't say nothing about making out. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Like, what type of girl do you think we are? Take us home. 
But uh, but yeah, no. Uh, another thing too, like that, I kind of I thought was funny was the uh, the puppet show, the Andrew Cuomo puppet show that was going on, like in the gazebo. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the fucking dude the that they were showing show. the pup, the the guy with the fucking mullet or whatever the hell he was. Yeah, the way he was smiling, it was just like, what the hell? That's was, classic was, Punch and Judy. It was that's horrible. What, that's what but there was one part I loved about that puppet show is when the fucking puppet start turning the gun and you could see the eyes of the puppet looking all mm-hmm. fucking mean. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. And, I, and, and how big of a fucking clown was sitting in that little ass fucking gazebo <laughs> and it's fucking jerrr, and it's fucking the whole thing and just fucking breaks around him. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Uh, the, uh, you, uh, you mentioned earlier, like the scene, like with the, uh, the biker gang, uh, the boxing clown or whatever yeah. you, know, you were talking about. Yeah. Well, like the, the thing that I noticed with that is like, is that the boxing clown like spins around and you can see the zipper on the back of his fucking head. Yes. Really? It glints. Yeah. Like even yes. like the light reflects off of it for a second and like glints and you can see it like the, yeah. Fucking classic, classic bullshit. B fucking horror yes. film, horror film thing. You can see the zipper on the back of his fucking head. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of humanoids from the deep. You ever seen that movie? Yes, you could see you could see the fucking. It's, oh my god! It's, it's the same thing. low budget, quickly made horror films. If this had, I love it. If this had tits, this would be a good Roger Corman film because I could see this being a Roger mm-hmm. Corman. Film. I could see that. I yeah. could. I can hear an argument for that. Yes. And then uh, the uh, the girl uh, Debbie, uh, she's uh, she's pl- she's uh, protected by plot armor. Like so, she gets like cornered in her house. There's like there's three clowns. Like they pull the gun out. I'm like, oh, she's fucked. She's co- she's cotton candy. Like there's no doubt. Yeah. And uh, they shoot her, and she turns like in like she doesn't turn into anything actually. Like turns into a little bubble. She gets, she gets enveloped in like in a balloon, and they take her away. It's just like why. When what? nobody else up to that point had been fucking ballooned. Exactly. Yeah. Like, why the fuck is she being treated so special? Like, I don't get it. Like, like is she, like, the long-term, like, snack for, like, for later on, like, in their galactic fucking mission? Or like, maybe they're going to capture a, a female and a male and br- so they can breed while they're doing the stuff and have a regular food source. Nah. No. Nah, Come pro- on now. They're farmers. She, she, was prote- she was protected by plot armor. That's all it was. Farmers, <laughs> goddammit. It, it, Farming it, clowns. It, it's just bad writing. That's all it is. It's just fucking bad writing. And No shit. Yeah. No, I know. No, I'm not going to lie. It's bad writing. Like I said, it's a bad movie. Yeah. It's not It's not a perfect movie. The writing is horrible. I mean, yeah. But it did it's work. Not, it's that, not the, Ed Wood writing, though. The balloons, <laughs> the, the balloon thing, even though it hadn't been fucking, it had any reason to exist up until that point. It, it 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 was a it worked as far as far as their bag of tricks went you know as far as the cotton candy as far as their popcorn guns as far as everything else it fit everything else that was going on that the clowns did yeah which is which is why i don't i don't believe like that they're they're just some sort of like you know random like alien species that looks like they're they're meant to be clowns like yeah. you know like as you if you have an alien species that like that kind of resembles clowns they have white face and, like in red lips and like in dark eyes or whatever like you know like then i can kind of believe that but the fact that they have like you know they have the popcorn and the balloons and like in the fucking the clown car and everything else and like in the their ship looks like a circus tent like like all right well i know that's what i talked is, about earlier this i couldn't is beyond, figure that out like randomization like yeah you know, like, this is beyond chance and everything like, this is beyond like you know like one in a million or whatever like you know like this is it's a twisted they're, mind they're meant to be clowns which kind of which kind of leads me to my question so like so i think what this i think what they are is that they are a shape-shifting alien species and they're trying to imitate something that we would find as less than threatening so that way they can infiltrate our uh our our society and like and and be able to do the things that that they're able to do rather than like oh that's that's just how they are naturally whatever i think that they're a shape-shifting species which leads me to like to my question is like is that if they chose this this form to invade Earth, if you were an, an invading alien species, what shape would you choose to uh, to like to uh, to infiltrate the the society, whatever, and like and better affect your uh, your takeover? Angels, like godly. Uh, no, no, that's that's good. Okay, like you know, yeah. Like, so wings and shit. Yeah, yeah. How many? How big is my invading force? Why? Do, why does this have to be so complicated? Because like, <laughs> honestly, I, I, I would I probably go a some, fucking question. I would probably go something small, no, a, it, innocuous, something like an insect or something like that, a, in order to attack of the small insects. Yeah, something that is that nobody pays they, any. They've fucking already done that to. before with like ants and killer bees and yeah, all that no, stuff. But the exact. But I'm saying I'm I'm not trying to make a fucking movie. He asked me what I would be if I was a shape shifting fucking alien invading force. Uh, so that's to me that that's something right there. That especially if I only ha- that o- I only have one tiny little fucking weak spot in relation to the rest of my body. The rest of me is basically invulnerable. Shit, I know. I already know. Yeah, one. cats and dogs, puppies. <laughs> I mean, seriously, everybody loves cats, dogs, and puppies. You, you, you depending see on where you land on Earth. 
Yeah. Oh, so, we so, just had that talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so actually, that like that's actually where my where my uh, my thing came from earlier. Like I was mentioning, like uh, talking about Switzerland and everything. Mm -hmm. So like so my my answer would be dogs because because like you know we've we as man's best friend we as humans have pretty much have like inhabited every single corner of this earth like in every single sort of like you know severe environment you can think of we like we've we've habitated and but we've had dogs with us like almost every single step of the mm -hmm. way. So like so if you're going to uh, take over Earth. Taking the form of a dog would be a very, very easy way to infiltrate every single aspect of society and then launch your takeover. So, like, so dogs would be the best way. However, if you end up in China, Vietnam, or Switzerland, as it turns out, not such a good, great. No, you're just going to see that you're just going to see them holding their two forks up. Says, "We're waiting for you. Come on down." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, dogs. I, I, like I, said, I think I'd be going I, insect like. I, I go with angels because you know people would think, oh, godly creatures, they're angels. They're coming down from from yeah. heaven above, and, yeah. and yeah. then they're coming out with fucking razor guns and they start shooting at all of us. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know. They're actually angels from space. I don't know. That'd be an interesting movie. Hold right on. Take. So, you know, uh, Legion. Ah, I've never seen it though. Is that aliens? That's not aliens. No, no but no. they're they're legit fucking angels that have fucking broken bad, basically. Yeah. Or the, right. uh, Christopher Walken, the prophecy. Yeah. Yeah, another one right there. Yeah, but no, like, uh, yeah, no, fair enough, man. Like, that's uh, that's that was that was my uh, my question for uh, how would you take over? How would you take over Earth, dude? Uh, that's a good question. Or virally, yeah. So like, yeah, so like, so uh, so we mentioned earlier, like you know, like uh, uh, invasion of the body snatchers, like that was some sort of like space spore, yes. like that had come down to Earth, like so, like so yeah. again, like very very small, like you know, like sort of organism, like you talked about, like you know, like not a bad idea either. Well, very 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 easy way to like to infiltrate like society, like and, and launch ta your takeover, which that been that film actually worked out pretty yeah. well for them. Yeah, yeah. You remember the TV show War of the Worlds? From yes. the eighties, yes. Remember how they took over the uh, the bodies and they kind of hid inside. I remember one of the hands coming mm -hmm. out of the stomach of so. Yeah, I, I was thinking about yeah, that, so not, like uh, virally or insectally. Yeah, that that's or no, no. To me, what, it, it, no. It, it's you, it's damn near indefensible. No, not just viral. What, what's the uh, word um, uh, when when something attaches to you? Uh, uh, symbiotic, yes. or parasitic, Symbi symbiotic, or something like that. Symbiotic, yeah. you are living. You and the host are coexisting together. Parasitic, you're eating the host. And eventually the host will die from symbiotic. It. I thought was like something that kind of joins in with you, you know, just yeah. like from That's what I said. doing but a Star you, Trek reference, you, you, but you live together, you know, uh, uh, symbiotic, you yeah. know, you yeah. help each other to survive. Yeah. Venom and carnage. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, good one. That's a good reference yeah. right well, there. That, yeah. Those there's, are there's, symbiotes. They're symbiotes. Yeah. 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 That, that's yeah. That's what I was thinking about. It'd be a whole, like a whole alien race of those coming mm -hmm. down and taking over and then, you know, taking over the, hu uh, the human race with that way. So, all right. So, all right. So favorite alien invasion movies. God, there's so many. Yeah, there is. A, there are a lot. Like, but like, but what are some of your favorites? I'll go. I'll go first since I'm prepared for this. So, like, so, uh, so, like I mentioned before, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, very, very cool movie. Tommy Knockers, that's another good one. Mars Attacks, one? like obviously, like sort of like in a, like a satire of like of uh, alien invasion movies, but like, yeah. but still, nonetheless, like fun as fuck to watch. And uh, Independence Day, another like super super fun movie. Like, which which I uh, remember in our War of the Worlds episode, Independence Day is just basically a remake of War of the Worlds. Remember it we is. did that whole yeah. big reference of that. Yeah, I know uh, it is. You know what I would have to say is, um, in fact, it's a movie we're going to be doing here in a future small batch. The Blob. I, I think the Blob is a really good one. I thought that one's just because it's something really creative because it's just how a big a little small thing of jelly could turn into a huge eating machine that just kills everybody. I don't know if this would classify as an invasion. Uh, fire in the sky dude such a good movie good such voice. a good fucking movie yes not not really an invasion yeah, film, but, yeah but like but would, still like as far as aliens exactly. go exactly like, okay. and it's like uh what do you class uh, would you put the thing in an alien invasion movie yes yeah because then i would actually put that one that one right there yeah. because that's a shapeshifter that tries to imitate us to take over mm -hmm. so i actually would probably Successful. put that as my number one favorite alien invasion movie john sure. carpenter's the thing sweet cool man yeah dude no um no cult classics are a funny thing man like um yeah dude's like so they uh so uh, like most of them are like are, are usually pretty good films like you know like my, my own favorite like fight club is actually classified as like as a, as a cult classic because yes. when it first came out it actually wasn't it actually didn't make a whole lot of money and it wasn't until later on that like that after it came out like on uh on uh, vhs at the time i guess 
Yeah. yeah that surprised me because I remember how big of a deal that was when that came out. But it was a slow burn. Like, well, apparently, yeah. like, apparently, like, it was, like, I, like, I don't remember. I was, like, fucking, like, 12 years old at the time. Well, one, one well, of mine is Blade Runner. Blade Runner was not not popular when it first same. came out. It was actually, it, it wasn't critically reviewed well. I mean, it was very visually stunning, but it didn't make the money it needed and everything else. And it's became more of a cult cult following, and now it's a sci-fi classic. I f- fucking love that movie. That's Night of Living Dead. Yeah, definitely. Yes, for sure. Yes, the original, and, you're talking about the original George yes. Romero version and Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead yeah. is a cult classic. Yeah. yeah, it's a cult comedy classic. I, yeah. I actually I remember that one, man. Like I remember like when Shaun of the Dead came out, like nobody really gave a fuck, and it wasn't until like after it came out, like on I guess it was I guess it would have been DVD. Yep. Um, that like that like it really kind of caught on. I remember like actually a dude that I worked with, he was like he's like, hey man, have you seen Shaun of the Dead? Like no, no, like. I had heard about it, like, and I never saw it. He's like, he's like, it's really good. And then you watch it, and you see, like, like the, like, just, like, how fucking funny it was. Like, exactly. Like, the tight writing and the callbacks and everything like that. Like, and you're just like, holy shit, like, this is next level. Like, your brain fucking explodes, like, and how good this movie is. Yeah. And, uh, and like, yeah, man, like, it was, it, it's absolutely, absolutely, like, a cult classic. But, yeah, I mean, like, that's, that's the way a lot of these are, these films are, like, is that they, like, you know, they, they, they come out, like, you know, they have kind of, like, kind of, like, a, a lackluster sort of, like, you know, release. And then, like, and then they they, they go. They rel- get on video, like, they, on video more. Yeah, following. yeah, yeah. They go, they go relatively unnoticed until they come out, like, on, on VHS or DVD, kind of showing our age a little bit. But, like, but. Like until they come out, like on Blu-ray or like or, or like or uh, video on demand, um, and then they, they sort of like you know kind of gain a following by word of mouth. Yeah. Um, and then there's other cult films, you know, like ones where people only say that they like them because they're so shit that nobody else does. <laughs> they're so shit that nobody else does that like that by liking it, it somehow makes them seem like they're smarter <laughs> than and that, like that somehow like that. People don't notice the things about these films that, like, the other normies I like, couldn't pick up on. Yeah. It's sort of like being a hipster, except, like, you know, like, that you never actually liked it, and it was never actually cool. I kind of feel like this film kind of fits into that category. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I-, I can hear an argument. <laughs> Dude, you like this movie, though. I can hear an argument for that. Especially, and it's backed up, 50-something percent, you know, reception. Yeah. Um, I can hear an argument for that. Uh, another... Uh, but, I like it. <laughs> but I like it. I still okay. like it though. Another I I, I, cult I classic agree with you. But Boondock Saints. Yeah, that uh, I, you know. All right, I, I that's that. You that see is, that as a cult classic? That, no, it, no, it absolutely is yes. for sure. Fuck yeah, it is. Okay. How do you not? I've seen it once, and I, I, yeah, it, it was good. But I've seen better ones. You know, I, I would go like Lock, Stock, and Two Barrels as a cult classic. Guy Ritchie's first movie. I thought think that one more. Clerks. That's a cult classic. Yes, that that it, you know what what was the what was the uh, reception on that one? Like what it had almost it, I, I it had almost no it had like only you know, hundred like a, a it was a super tiny budget. release. Uh, you know, and as far as theaters go, it didn't, until it came out on VHS, it, it, that's that's when it started building a classic. That's when it started getting the following. So overall, let's go ahead and give our little rating system on this movie. I'm really curious to hear what yours is. So Tyler, why don't you go first? Oh, dude, one one fucking pint. Oh my one god, pint, really? Dude. Dude, one, one pint. I figured you'd give two. One pint. One pint. Oh, oh pint. come on. One pint. One pint of beer. How about you? It's enjoyable. I would recommend it to people with the with the major fucking asterisks. It is a bad movie. That's good. It is a bad Agreed. fucking movie. That's good. Agreed. Based on that criteria, I have to give it a three stars. I am insane. Bro, really? No, no. Really? Dude, no. That's that's really? actually mine. That's what I'm going for. No, no, no. If it's fine. I enjoyed it's fine. It's fine. and I would recommend it to somebody, that's a minimum three stars. Dude, you know what? That's fine, man, because, you know, like, we're, we're going to keep up with this uh, this rating system, and I, I, I can't wait to see the other movies that you give three pints to. Okay. <laughs> And be all like, right. hey man, you remember like this is like killer clown material, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I would give all right. You so, mean sort of like uh our our wonderful, wonderful co host okay, Ron okay, decided okay. that Mayhem was better than Tombstone. Yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's gonna that's gonna stick. I was I w- okay, it was our first one doing the rating system, so I, I admit to being wrong. I would give that probably another whole pint down. I apologize. I sh- should have probably given a whole pint down. What did I give that? Four and a half? Yes. Oh, my God. Too All much. Right. Three Too and a half. Too much. Three. It, you know what? It is it, a, it is a, a fun movie. It is no, a no. enjoyable movie. It is well done for what it is. No, yeah. no, you you are completely right. Yeah. I've thought about it, and even after we did that episode, I thought to myself, 
I gave that movie too high of a rating. I, it was an enjoyable as fuck movie. I fucking loved it. It's rewatchable, but I would give it a three and a half. So I changed my four and a half to a three and a half. Now for this movie, I would give three. I would. I'm the same. I'm on par with you on that. I, I agree with you 100. percent It's a bad movie, but it's too bad. It's one of those. It's so bad. It's good movies. Yes. that's what I would put it in. Yes, I enjoyed it. It was a great movie, and I would definitely, definitely watch it over and over again. And when my kids get older, I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to them because I mean, they're they're not afraid of clowns. So. God help them. <laughs> show it to them now. But uh, overall, guys, that's our small batch episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, till the next time, later. Have everybody. a good one. Well, bye. Hey guys, thanks for listening to our podcast, Barrel Age Flicks. We are so excited for the upcoming episodes headed your way and bonus episodes of The Small Batch, Sammy Selects, and now The New Tasting Room. If you like our show, please spread the word, give us a like, or leave us some kind of review on any of the social media pages. Give us a follow on Instagram, Barrel Flicks, or Facebook, Barrel Age Flicks. Our podcast is available on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor, Radio Public, Audible, Pocket Cast, Spotify, CastBox, YouTube, and now Pandora. Please shoot us an email at BarrelAgeFlicks at Gmail with comments and movie suggestions for future shows or any other things you'd like to let us know. Credit to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio on YouTube. Man, your music is awesome. We thank you so much for that. It's great. You guys go ahead and check him out. I just want to say thank you so much. We hope to see you guys next week. Thank you so much for listening. See you then.